Is AWS tanking in the enterprise cloud market? Let's talk about it. So welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B-list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So as we talked about a couple of videos ago, AWS is in a declining market share positioning and they're having stiffening competition out there. So while AWS remains the leader in the infrastructure as a service market with 37.7% share, but its decline from last year's 39% signals intensified competition. Microsoft steady growth to 23.9% and Google Cloud's rise to 9% highlights the effectiveness of their strategies in closing the gap with AWS. This reflects the broader trend of a dynamic and maturing cloud market. So this is not going to be the beat up on AWS channel, by the way. And obviously, we, we've talked about this a couple of videos, but it is big news in the cloud computing space. AWS has always been the 800-pound gorilla in the room uh, when it comes to infrastructure as a service providers. And I've noticed over the last few years, you know, both, you know, just anecdotal information, me working with clients, things like that. They've lost the momentum, I think, that they had, you know, three, four, you know, five years ago. And so obviously the, they're the company that defined what the infrastructure as a service market was. They were the first to be successful in it. Uh, and now they have some competition and they're seeing a softening of the market. And they're also seeing interest in you know some of the alternative clouds that are out there in other words anything that's not a hyperscaler private cloud sovereign clouds you know we talked about a lot about that on the channel and i think that's only going to continue so their worries are going to be long term and they're going to have to figure out how to out innovate their competition and as we talked about you know in many videos here on this channel uh, that may be something that they find difficult to do at this stage in the maturity but we'll see if they pull it out obviously you know, AWS, big company, huge amounts of assets, and they have a lot of smart people there and they're very aggressive. Uh, so I suspect they're going to have, you know, something up their sleeves and how they get back into the market share and get the momentum back up and running. But right now they're in a bit of trouble. So AI as the new battleground for the infrastructure as a service providers, heavy investment in AI infrastructure by hyperscalers, AWS, Microsoft, and Google suggests that AI is becoming the central driver of cloud innovation. Providers are racing to deliver AI optimized infrastructure as a service solution, despite AI currently accounting for only a small fraction of their revenue because enterprises haven't really got up to speed with it yet. This investment will likely define future market winners and losers in the cloud space. Yeah, I, I believe this to be the case. In other words, enterprises are moving headlong into AI systems, are looking around at the different platform options that they have to do. And obviously, the public cloud providers are going to be the easy button for AI because they're, uh, you know, everything is going to be there as a service. You're able to turn on a complete ecosystem, you know, on demand, where if you're, you know, using your own own hardware, you're going to have to configure most of that stuff yourself, you know, or you can leverage an AI private cloud or you can leverage a managed service provider. They have AI offerings and the ability to provide an ecosystem for you. Uh, and public cloud providers are not the cheaper choice. They're typically the most expensive. And so as enterprises are looking at these big compute bills to deal with training and inference that AI is going to need, public cloud providers at the bottom of the list, and I'm talking about all of them, not just AWS, um, because of the amount of money and investment and lock-in that you're going to experience in when you move to a, to a hyperscaler, a big public cloud provider. And also the rise of the alternatives, sovereign clouds, you know, specialized cloud providers, core weaved, you know, GPU as a service, things like that. And of course, managed service providers and, and co-location providers that we just mentioned are all going to be cheaper alternatives and in many cases, way cheaper alternatives. And so as companies are looking to figure out what's going to be their strategic AI platform, public clouds are no longer going to be at the top of the list. They're going to be on the list for sure. And you should look at them as an architectural option. But they're going to come with a lot of baggage right now. And I think AWS is finding that. I think the other hyperscalers will see that as well. 
when the market matures. But, you know, right now, uh, many of the enterprises, certainly that I'm working with, are not considering AWS because they don't view them as a leader and innovator in the AI space, uh, whether that's deserved or not. And the big thing is they're expensive. <laughs> so you're going to spend, you know, three, four, sometimes five times the amount of money you're going to spend on just owning your own hardware. In other words, buying and investing in your own on-premise service, service, servers. And AWS is going to be, you know, flailing a bit until they figure out how to gain that market back. So evolving enterprises needs flexibility, sovereignty, and modernization. So the demand for flexibility, data sovereignty, and cloud modernization drives enterprise adoption of infrastructure as a service providers. So organizations increasingly adopt multi-cloud strategies to optimize workloads while maintaining control over compliance and performance. So this emphasizes the need for providers to design solutions that support diverse and hybrid environments. And so companies are moving away from the notion that it's going to be a cloud only world anymore and moving into the world where we're looking at all options are on the table, including on-prem systems, things like that. So things we wouldn't consider 10 years ago as everybody was moving into the cloud. And certainly many companies had a cloud only posture. Uh, that's off the table right now. I think the world moving forward, and I think even the cloud providers see this is going to be heterogeneous. In other words, multiple platforms on-prem, you know, sovereign clouds, private clouds, edge computing, all that kind of stuff is on the table. And by therefore, it's going to be a complex environment with uh, with more heterogeneity. And I think that's where the moving that we're work that we're moving to right now. And people are doing so for more flexibility, more options and definitely more control. As we mentioned earlier, too, that's also the emergence of specialized cloud solutions. So the rise of niche providers offering AI-specific or GPU-as-a-service uh, solutions shows how emerging players, you know, such as CoreWeave and Lambda Labs, are addressing immediate capacity and performance needs. So this shift indicates a growing segmentation of the market with hyperscalers facing challenges, not just from direct competitors, in other words, other hyperscalers, but also from specialized vendors. So it's no longer going to be a Microsoft, Google versus AWS. It's going to be Microsoft, Google versus AWS versus Corewe versus Lambda Labs versus the other half a dozen, you know, GPU as a service providers that are out there uh, or the sovereign cloud providers that are focusing on AI or certainly, you know, the private AI, the private AI clouds that are being sold by Dell's and the HPEs and the, and the, and the Broadcoms of the world. And so that mere fact is going to mean that in many cases, and I'm not just talking about AWS, I think a hyperscale in general, but their market momentum is going to slow down just because we have so many other options. And the big thing is not that we haven't always had these options. They've been around since public cloud's been around. Obviously, you could always buy your own servers and stick your stuff on your own servers is the fact that many of the enterprises are now open to consider them. You know, if I, you know, talked to enterprises five years ago, they would have said, we're moving everything to AWS, we're moving everything to Microsoft, everything to Google, are all three in a multi-cloud deployment. But now they're open for anything. They understand that the architectural options need to be uh, thought through and that everything is back on the table where everything was not on the table five years ago. So AWS is contending with a market where, not only options exist, but the enterprises out there know they have the options and they're willing to move to those options. That's what's different now. So we also have geopolitical and regulatory challenges for the cloud leaders that are out there. AWS and Microsoft dominance in the UK cloud market with a combined 70% share has drawn the scrutiny of UK's competition and markets authority with potential interventions looming. Hyperscalers will need to address competitive concerns while ensuring compliance with regional regulations. And this is particularly in markets where concerns about data sovereignty are growing. And I'm seeing a complete change. We did videos about this, you know, talking about how, uh, you know, the European markets and the European customers are being, you know, including the UK, are becoming very suspicious of the U.S. based hyperscalers, and in many cases, we have the Cloud Act, and certainly have GDPR and other, you know, regulatory pressures that are meaning that there may be a downside or a risk with using a U.S. based provider, and so the sovereignty is coming onto the mix again. And so, in many of the European companies that I'm looking at right now or working with right now, 
they're moving to sovereign cloud providers or, or to their own equipment because of these pressures. So they're concerned are they're they're concerned about U.S. law enforcement, you know, taking possession of their data, things like that. Uh, I doubt that's going to happen, but it could, you know, based on some of the things we saw. And obviously, you know, Microsoft recently, uh, you know, had to uh, uh, kick <laughs> kick one of their client their customers off their system. Uh, because of uh, sanctions uh, in operating in the UK, an Indian-based uh, energy company. And seeing things like that in the press, and obviously, you know, you're likely not going to experience that. That's scary. And people are putting risks now associated with leveraging hyperscalers. So that's another thing that AWS is contending with. So in other words, if people are moving to more sovereign-based solutions and own-based solutions and making that happen, things they can control better, things things that don't have regulatory and compliance risks associated with them, they're going to lose share. And I'm not sure, quite sure how they're going to respond to that. Some of the other public cloud providers are building their own sovereign cloud instances and you know things like that. I still think that's not going to be the way many of the enterprises are going to go. So in other words, they're not going to move from AWS you know, as a international, uh, you know, deployed cloud provider to a sovereign based service, because uh, it's still going to be owned by a US based cloud provider, even if you put the, you know, legal, you know, firewalls in place, things like that. They're still concerned about US law enforcement in intervening somehow, and they're, con- they're going to be concerned about the risk of doing it. And I don't blame them. Obviously, you know, things shift, geopolitics is obviously shifting. And obviously, we've seen some things occur in the last few years that we didn't expect would occur in the cloud computing space when it first started 15 years ago. So AWS is still growing. They're just growing at a much more slower rate, but it does raise question about AWS's strategy. So reports of AWS's, you know, slower growth, such as its 17% growth in early 2025 compared to Microsoft and Google's higher rate of growth highlights the need for AWS to adapt its strategy to maintain dominance. You know, whether it's doubling down on AI, improving its cloud modernization offerings, or addressing regional competition, AWS faces increasing pressure to safeguard its leadership position in the market. And I think they've already compromised that. I think, uh, they haven't been the most innovative player in the space, you know, even though in the past AWS has, you know, done a lot, very, a lot of very neat things, inventing things that, you know, didn't exist in the past, serverless, for example. And, uh, you know, some of the containers, the service technology, the stuff that AWS put out was excellent and considered innovative as, at its time. But now I think they lost their edge. They don't have an innovative differentiator in the marketplace, even looking at their agentic AI, AI offering that, you know, showed up last month. You know, it was just cobbling together different tools and technologies uh, and partner, you know, partner solutions as well to get something out in the market that would, uh, you know, give them the Agentic AI checkbox, checkbox, but it wasn't new, wasn't innovative. Uh, There wasn't something that I would say, oh, man, that's brand new. This is something that a cloud leader would would produce. And they haven't done that. And I think people are uh, now voting with their feet and. So AWS may have to do a lot of catch up uh, and have to do some uh, risks, take some risks that they didn't account on taking, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, the market kind of showed up for them, you know, massive crowds at reInvent, things like that. Uh, Still going to grow, going to be a much more slower rate, and they're going to have to figure out some way to become back, to get themselves back in the game. Right now they're at risk. Well, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments about AWS, whether you use AWS and you're going to continue to use AWS. Love to hear it. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also, check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very, very safe. Later.